Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud. And uh, today, very exciting, this is part three of our How to Make Great Video series. And today we're going to focus on titles, transitions, and overlays. And it's just some of the basic things that you can use to kind of finesse the edit a bit. Um, and it's also going to feature one of our newest features that we just added to Premiere Pro in this most recent update just a few weeks ago um, called the Essential Graphics Panel. So yeah, so we've got a lot of stuff to cover and we're going to bounce around a little bit between Premiere Pro, we'll go into some After Effects briefly and kind of show you how some of the construction of those uh, motion graphics templates comes together and then really go through some of the fundamentals of just working with transitions, everything from basic cross dissolves, linear light dissolves, uh, to sort of the, the fade to white or white flash style transitions. Also having kind of black frames in between cuts to kind of give it a more stylized look. All right, so let's get started. So we have a new panel in Premiere Pro called Essential Graphics. And what this does is it brings the power of creating motion graphics directly into Premiere Pro. But more importantly, we introduced a couple of things, uh, namely the ability to create them right on screen in the program monitor. So you no longer have to go to the uh, modal titler dialog to create text and titles. And what you'll actually see is that we've also added a type tool. So after many, many years and many requests to have this, you'll see that you actually have a type tool and a vertical type tool as well. So very useful, very handy to have these things. And what this now means is that you can create text and titles right on screen, right on canvas. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to bounce over to a new timeline here. And in fact, I think instead of using this footage, which happens to have come from Adobe stock, I'm actually going to go to my own library here and bring in some Adobe stock footage that I've already licensed. So you can find this exact footage on Adobe stock if you so desire. Take a quick look at this. So again, really cool, shot by the one and only Terry White. Perfect for a cool title sequence, right? All right. And uh, maybe while I'm at it, let's go back over to libraries here. We'll pull in another piece of footage. Uh, maybe this one here. This was a, a pretty cool looking um, time lapse shot in Tokyo. So we'll bring this in. And I'll just let that go ahead and download. You can see there's a progress meter here. It's downloading the footage from Adobe Stock right into my project. OK, so let's start by making some basic titles here. And I'll show you kind of the workflow of how this works. So you can see we're in the Essential Graphics panel. We're also in a new graphics workspace, which you can see up at the top here. So uh, let's go ahead and start by grabbing our text tool. And again, this is part of the new workflow, which is I can just click right inside here and I can start typing my text. So let's say this will be kind of, you know, credits text. So it will be something like uh, assistant director. All right. I'll probably change this from white. Maybe we'll make this a different color. Now, when I do that, you'll notice that automatically it adds a layer inside here to the essential graphics panel. We're actually working in a layer stack. We're going to come back to this in a moment. But when I type right on the program monitor, now you see that we're presented with some alignment and transform controls. So I can align this vertically. I can align it horizontally just to get me wherever I need to go. Uh, again, if I just change my tool here, let's move this up a bit. Maybe I'll just do a horizontal alignment. Go ahead and uh, select my text again. Maybe I'll change the color. We don't want it in white. So I can go down to the appearance section here and maybe we'll make this uh, let's go into something like this, maybe something like that, just that it pops out a little bit more. And you'll see that you've got the ability to change your fonts as well. So if I hover over this text font area, whether I'm using a wheel mouse or uh, gestures on my magic mouse here, I can scroll through different fonts. You can see that happening. I'm just using a gesture here. So I'm going to go to something like, um, I happen to, as of late, I'm really liking which one is it? It's uh, Paralucent. Let's go to Paralucent. All right, I like that. I can change the size. So maybe we'll bring this down to around 82 pixels. Again, re-horizontally align here. I can change the weight. I'll keep it extra light for right now. And you get the idea. Okay, 
So we just type some basic text right on the screen here. There's more that we can do to this, and we'll do that in a moment. Now, if I go to this little flyout menu here, now I can add additional text. I can also add shapes, as you can see. So let's just go ahead and make a little uh, rectangle here. You see I'm going to kind of divide the fields up here. Um, kind of a standard kind of thing. All right, so we'll do this in red. Now I realize this is in that broadcast unfriendly red. You'll see what I mean in a minute here. So let's kind of bring this up over here. Maybe I'll expand this out a little bit. Again, I'll do my horizontal alignment. Let's go ahead and change that color. Something like this. You can see why I don't do titles often. I am not a, not a designer. <laughs> All right, change the color there. Have some basic color. Now I can go in and do another text layer. Put my name down here. Jason Levine. Okay. Again, click and drag. Move this. Maybe we'll do our horizontal alignment. Okay. And maybe for this text, actually, maybe we want to scale it up a little bit or even change the, make, make that light or maybe even medium. Why not? Okay. Something like that. And we have the basis of uh, uh, a basic sort of text overlay here. Now you'll notice we're starting to build up a layer stack. And you will also have noticed that we can bring in things from files as well. And this includes the ability to bring in video as well as uh, additional image layers, as well as even things like illustrator layers. So let me just show you real briefly. I won't keep this in here necessarily, but if I go to from file, let me bounce over to my asset drive. And let's go ahead and pull up some footage here. All right. And I'm going to bring in uh, a logo of mine from uh, a series which you're going to be seeing in just a moment called Jace's Places. You can see that this is, in fact, an Illustrator file. I can go ahead and import this. It comes right on screen here. Again, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and scale this down and make it nice and small. And maybe I'm going to stick this just right under, whoops, right underneath my name here. Move this around, scale it up a little bit more like that. Let's do the horizontal alignment. Okay. Something like this. Again, maybe I'll even change the opacity so that I have sort of my branded logo under my name. Okay. Go back out to fit. Okay. And now we might want to actually start animating and doing additional things with this. Okay. Maybe we just want things to fade on or to blur on. So people are asking, how do you animate these elements? Well, it's really simple. So again, I'm going to select the text here. And what's cool about this panel is that this doesn't change the way that you've already been sort of working and animating, except that you're doing it right on screen. We're now going to leverage the effects controls panel, where much like what we see here in Essential Graphics, if we look at the top here at the text layer, Assistant Director, you're seeing all of the same fields, parameters, everything that we've got in there. And this is where we can start to edit and modify. Now, if I want to do animation, again, it doesn't change the way we used to do it. We're going to go into the Transform field for this text layer, and this is how we're going to animate it on. And again, I know you're saying it's hard to see. We're going to fix that in a minute. You'll see why I'm waiting to show you that. So let's first start just by maybe uh, adjusting opacity. So maybe when we get to around one second and 22 frames, I want the opacity to be 100%. Set a keyframe here. Let's go ahead and wind back, adjust opacity, and you can see Assistant Director flies on, okay? Uh, similarly, let's go to the name text here, my Jason Levine, name, and we'll do the same. I'll set an opacity keyframe here at 100, wind back, set it to zero. Now my name flies on. Okay, and maybe even a little afterwards, let's go down to our shape layer here, and we'll do the same thing. I'm going to set an opacity keyframe. Now maybe I don't even want that to be 100%. Maybe I'll set it around 95. Wind this back down to zero. Okay, and now we've got some very basic text. And lastly, we'll do the same thing for my, uh, my little Illustrator logo. Again, I know you're saying, wow, that looks really horrible. You clearly don't design for a living, and you're absolutely right. I do not. <laughs> 
I'm just showing you here how this all works. It's up to you to make it look good. All right, maybe we'll have this come in a little bit later. All right, and now the logo appears, okay? Very, very simple, very, very easy, nice, elegant, simple to do, okay. And if we wanted to get even fancier with this, we can start to add additional things like additional effects. So if I came up to my effects and I wanted to do something like, say, a directional blur, I can go ahead and place this. Let's go ahead and drag this to the bottom of our layer stack here, or the top, depending upon which, which sort of direction you're looking in. At this point, we want everything to be not blurry. Wind it back to around here. And we'll make it sort of super blurry. Okay. And maybe I'll even shorten those keyframes so it happens a little bit sooner. And we can also adjust the direction as well. So again, here, direction zero, maybe here. I'll kind of skew it a little bit. Maybe 90 degrees. Okay. Now, again, that may not be your style or taste. To be honest, it isn't really mine either. Just showing you how you can do these things and how it works in this kind of layered kind of way. All right. So now, now that I like this, I might want to re, I'm going to reuse the same graphic multiple times. That's kind of the idea behind making a motion graphics template is that this is something which I'm going to reuse. So I'm just going to quickly select this video. I'm going to, I'm going to reuse the same video a couple of times just because it's kind of short here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm holding down Alt or Option and I'm just going to drag in three versions of this same text that you see here. Okay. And I'm going to change the text in each one of these. So maybe this one over here, this one is an assistant director. This one will change this text to be associate producer. And Terry, it's going to be you, dude. Thanks for joining the production. <laughs> All right. Realign those things here. And this one, let's see, instead of assistant director, again, we'll make this uh, music director. And we'll just keep that me. All right. So we've got three versions of the same text with the same animations happening over time. All right. Very simple, very easy, very cool. So when I look at this now and I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I like this and I like the style that I'm going for here. Um, I may actually want to create this as a master style. In other words, this is a style that I want to use over and over again. So when I go ahead and I, I, and I click onto this first text layer here, you'll notice that we have master styles inside of the essential graphics panel. If I click on this down arrow here, I'm going to create a new master text style and we'll call this uh, Jason film. Okay. For lack of a better term. And I'm now going to apply this master style to all three, all three of these, uh, different templates here. Okay. And I like this and I like the way this looks. Okay. Now, again, as we were mentioning before, maybe, maybe this needs a little drop shadow. Maybe it needs something else. Okay. So what I can actually do is I can come in here and let's say I wanted to make a change. Let's say I wanted to actually make this text, give it a drop shadow. Okay. Now that's way too much. So I'm going to back off on the opacity here. Okay. And maybe I'll add a little bit more blur to this. Okay. And I can adjust the angle of that drop shadow. So it pops out a bit more. Okay. And maybe I'll do the same thing. Uh, or maybe I'll even change the fill color here so that it's a little bit darker on the bottom. Okay. Getting slightly more stylized there. Maybe that's a little too much. Okay. So I'll back that off a little bit more. Something like that. Okay just to kind of set it apart a bit more. I happen to like that now. Okay. So when I've made that change, notice up at the top here, it says that my master style has been modified. Okay. So now what I can do is I have the ability to either sync from the original, meaning 
dis uh, discard the changes that I just made, or I can push all of the changes I just made. So if I go ahead and do that, now, instead of having to go back through all of these things, notice that it's automatically done just that to all of these. So you can see here the, uh, the more orange text on the name and the little bit of drop shadow that's also been applied. So that by changing that master style, it's filtered through to each of the iterations anywhere that I used this multiple times inside the project. Real simple, real easy. And you can imagine whether you're building lower thirds and you're going to change, you know, a color element or you'll change the color of this bar. Or again, maybe you're going to add um, some of, you know, some of the opacity change to, uh, to this one as well. You can see I can just add the master style to that text at the top there, you know, and it, and it changes. You get the idea. So we can change this around and modify this. Now, if I like the way this looks, and maybe I'll keep it with that on there like that, I can go ahead and export this as a motion graphics template. And when I do that, what's really cool is that now I have the ability to save this either locally to the essential graphics panel inside the app, or more importantly, I can save this to my CC libraries. Now, the real benefit here is that by doing that, now I have the ability to share this. So if I have a shared library, I can actually let others use this graphic with me, which is super, super cool. So let's go ahead and save this to Jason's library. And I'll call this how to make great video. Oops, how to make great video 01 to Jason's library. Click OK on this. Now when I go into libraries, what you can actually see, it's already here, okay? That template has already been saved into my CC libraries. It tells you the duration, by the way. You can see it also shows you how big it is. And people have been asking, how big can these things get? I believe they can be one gig. Well, I know they can be one gig. They might be, uh, they might be able to go up to two gigs. I don't know if any of my uh, Adobe friends are in the chat right now who know for sure. Now, just to kind of show you here, let me get rid of this one. I've got some others that I made here. Here's another one, Jace's fave title. If I go ahead and drag this in. All right, this is one that I made uh, probably at NAB. Okay. That one's got a very long animated intro there, okay? But this kind of gives you an idea of what that looks like, okay? Here's the other one we just created. Okay, really simple, really easy. Just to show you another variation with some video. Now again, this one isn't necessarily going to apply here, but I believe this one has some, here, wait, let me see, I've got one of these. Yeah, this one, uh, the oceans. Hold on, I'm looking for some that had, here we go. This one's got some actual video in it. All right, again, bringing in video elements to a motion graphics template. Okay, so this is actual 4K video inside of that template with some graphics. Now, I didn't animate any of the text here. I could have, but what you can actually see is that this contains a video clip. Okay, so you can have video, video with audio, Illustrator files, Photoshop layers, JPEGs, etc., and of course, animated text, all self-contained in a motion graphics template which can be stored and shared inside of a CC library. So now anyone who's worked in design, you guys have had all of this for some time, right? You've had the ability to create your graphics, your lower thirds, your branded elements, place them into a shared CC library, and actually uh, use those things with other people in your organization. We've just brought this to video, so this is huge. Now one of the other things that we did that's really great here is that even if you don't wanna make these yourself, you can create uh, or modify, rather, preset motion graphics templates that we've already built for you. And you can see those here. So we have captions and subtitles, credits, graphic overlays, lower thirds, slates, some social media ones, titles, and then we have some that have AE in the front of the name. And we're gonna come back to those in just a minute. So just to kind of show you, since I was talking about lower thirds, if we go into something like lower thirds, let's grab a, one of these here, a classic, lower third one line and I'll drag this in. I'm going to turn off the uh, the one that we just created here 
And if I wind back and just kind of scrub through this now, you can see now again, this one has some directional blur. It's got some opacity animation going on here. All right, and you can see exactly what it's doing and you've got all of your editable text and all of these shape layers that you see here are making up that blue graphic that you can see with all the different modified uh, uh, fill colors in the appearance panel that you can see down below. You can change and modify any of those elements very, very simply. Grab our text tool, select our text, okay. Wind it back and you've got an animated lower third, okay? So presets, lower thirds. Let's go into something like credits. All right, these are even cooler. So these uh, simulate some like motion film style credits that you've seen before. Again, I can take this, drag this in. All right. And that looks very, very film like, right? Like very movie like, you know, especially if this were the end of a film <laughs> or a movie poster. Okay, and all of this, all of this text, everything is editable, modifiable, and all that animation and stuff is already built in, and you're doing it right on screen. Now, if we go back to browse here, uh, so you can kind of go through all of these again. If you've got the latest updated Premiere, you can check all of these out. But let's go into some of these After Effects ones, because this is where it starts to get really interesting, because as I mentioned, you can also build motion graphics templates in After Effects, and, not, and naturally, they can get a lot more complex when you're actually building those in After Effects. So let's go ahead and drag one of those in. I'm gonna get rid of the ones that we've got here. And let's grab this uh, news lower third right. All right, and drag this in. Give it a second to load in. Now again, these can be, you know, a gig in size or more. And when I bring this one in and select it here, first of all, what you're gonna notice is that one, um, it just looks a lot more interesting because it's leveraging a lot of different elements from After Effects. Notice the globe is spinning, okay? Notice also, you've got this little dotted kind of text background. Watch, that too is also moving. You see that on screen? So we've got all this additional motion contained in this motion graphics template. And when I select it here, Again, you've got different editable fields that came from After Effects. So this can be, let's say, Jason Levine, and I can force uppercase if I want. That was an option that was set in After Effects. Notice it changes right on screen, live on Facebook. And we won't, let's not do live on Facebook. Something like that, all right? And I won't force the uppercase, and it changes, okay? And all the animation, and everything is retained. Now where it starts to get interesting, you'll notice that you have these text fields here that are indicating what each of the editable fields is doing. This is because we allow commenting from within After Effects. And notice that I can change things like the rotation speed or the longitude offset of the globe or the latitude offset of the globe or the angle offset. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit more of the globe like this. I can make all these different modifications or I can change the colors. So again, I'll keep the main color, but maybe we'll go for the highlight color. Maybe we'll go into something like a, like a very dark kind of foresty green. That's not quite foresty green, but close enough. You get the idea. And all of this animation is retained. Okay. So how do we create and modify and work with these things in After Effects and then also save these to a shared library? Well, it's very, very simple. And the coolest thing about this and what makes this really awesome uh, is that this actually allows you to even create graphics templates from existing After Effects comps that you've already built. So let me go ahead and open up this project here and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna scroll through a couple of these things. Oh, there's our Imagine Dragons uh, friends. Also, we've got uh, an essential graphics uh, workspace here. So let me go ahead and change to the right comp. Okay, so the essential graphics panel in After Effects here. So first of all, we're gonna give this one a name. I'm gonna call this Church Intro. 
all right? And we've got this comp here. Now, this has nothing to do with the church, but what I'm trying to showcase here is that this is a very complex After Effects animation that not only has video layers, it has animated text. You can see that we've got this kind of low poly animated floor in the scene of this particular comp. It also has um, a video glitch effect on the text right there. Can you see that as I'm kind of I'm kind of scrubbing through slowly so that it's caching frames. So there's a lot of stuff going on in here. And I want certain elements of this to be editable to the editor in Premiere Pro because I want this to become a template that they can reuse. So from within the Essential Graphics panel in After Effects now, and this is cool because again, your After Effects designer can make these. The editor, if you're kind of afraid of After Effects, you never even have to go here um, to do it all. They can make these templates for you and make only certain parameters editable so that you can keep on editing and focus on the edit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose this button here called Solo Supported Properties. And what that does is that it's going to show you all the different properties inside of the comp that can be made editable in a motion graphics template. Now I want to stress here, not all elements can be editable, are editable in a motion graphics template. That's why we have the button to solo the supported properties. Not all properties can be used in a motion, can be editable in a motion graphics template. Anything that you have in the comp can live inside of the template. That doesn't make certain that it's editable though. So that's why we have solo supported properties. So for instance, the first couple of things, what do I want to be editable? Naturally the text. So here we have our text layers. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the title text. I can come up here and say title text and give it the name. And again, you see it's first assistant title. Come to the second text layer. Let's go ahead and drag this in. And this will be name text, okay? And then I can add a comment. These next fields relate to animation and light. Scroll back up here and we have like the left and right adjust of the uh, the sliding in, the sli sliding into the text. So I want to add a slider for that, okay? And I can adjust the range of how far I want things to move as well. And we'll call this title left, right. Here's title up and down. Go ahead and drag that in, okay? title, up, down. And let's see, we've got drift. Here we go, lighting direction. This is what I wanted. So this one is cool, so we'll call this lighting direction. And again, you can set the range here, zero to 360, so maybe you want this to be, have a little less movement here, zero to 180, okay? And this will allow us to modify that. And maybe we'll add the background tint color as well and leave that there, okay? And then we can add another comment if we want. Uh, and this'll be, you know, motion stuff. Okay, you get the idea. And I'm quickly gonna save this comp, uh, save this project rather as JL09, okay. So now that I've done this, these are all of the fields that will be readily editable to my editor inside of Premiere. So now what I need to do is simply export this as a motion graphics template, okay? Let's go ahead and export this. It's gonna package everything up for me, including all the video that's contained in there. Give it a second. Where do I want this to go? Now again, I can place it inside the Essential Graphics panel itself, or I can place it in any of my libraries. The ones at the top up here, by the way, these are uh, my own libraries, the ones down here where I even have like people's names and stuff. These are shared libraries. So again, if I wanted to share these with some of you or anybody, that's how I can do that. So let's go ahead and I'll place this in my JSONs library. This is where I stick all of my stuff for my active daily use. Click OK. And here in libraries, you can see it's already been added to libraries in After Effects. Now again, you can't drag these things into After Effects because you make them in After Effects. So these aren't, these aren't usable in After Effects. They're usable in Premiere. You author them here with the idea that you're going to use those in Premiere. So. How do we begin using this in Premiere? That's a great question. 
All right. And again, I see someone's asking to play. This has got a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on here. I can I can play a couple frames of this for you. All right. Let you kind of see what it looks like there. As it's caching all the frames again, a lot of animation. There's a lot of light and movement. And it's pretty cool, right? Z looks very spacey kind of you've seen a lot of this kind of stuff lately it looks very very sort of timely okay let's bounce over to Premiere Pro let's get rid of this one and again this is a, this is a full you know we're this is going to overlay everything here let's go into my libraries oh and look at what we have there Jason's library church intro as promised just created in After Effects there it is so now if I go ahead and drag this in, give it a second to load it up. Again, these can be a gig in size, so just keep that in mind that these things are huge or can be. All right. Now, notice I'm scrubbing through. Look at this. First of all, look at the performance of this thing. Kind of amazing. The other amazing thing that I want to point out here is that you don't even need to have After Effects running, number one. Now, you do need to have After Effects installed, okay, to make this work. Now, here's the cool thing. Even if you're a single app subscriber, you only need to even have a demo of After Effects installed. Even if it's a timed out demo, you just need to have After Effects installed for these to work, okay? So, pretty cool, pretty flexible. So, once again, just like with before, like I showed you, so this can be, you know, uh, director of photography, Jason Levine. Okay. Change the text, updates immediately. All right. Then we have our title left, right, again, with the various parameters that we set and our lighting direction. And remember we set it, I, I went from 360 to 180. And again, you can see how as I'm modifying this slider here, uh, these parameters, again, can all change, okay? Very simply, very easily, very nicely, all right? Background color, I can change that. We don't want this to be blue. We want it to be more in kind of a dark, earthy tone. Something like that, okay? And I can change this right on screen immediately. And again, as I kind of scrub through, it'll continue to cache our frames. Okay, again, there's like all this low poly animation and video, and it just works. So think about it. Your motion graphics designer can be creating these things for you, saving them to a shared CC library. You don't even have to know when it's happening. You're just going to go to your libraries panel, and suddenly you're going to see, oh, look, there's all these cool lower thirds and things that they made for me, and you can start using these. All right? So text and titles directly from After Effects making motion graphics templates inside of Premiere Pro, and also the ability to make native motion graphics templates in Premiere Pro, including using master styles, upgrading to master graphics, including the new uh, type tool, which includes, by the way, uh, regular type and vertical type inside of Premiere. Okay. All right, so now we're going to uh, skip ahead talking a little bit about transitions. All right, so let me go ahead and close this project. Got about 20 more minutes here, and let's open up another one, and I'm gonna go to this project here. So this is a project uh, which I started working on a couple months back. This is the, the trailer for um, this little series that I was doing called Jace's Places. This was shot uh, live in Tokyo back in November. And um, transitions are, you know, a, a really, uh, well, first of all, you use transitions to go from one shot to the next, for those of you kind of new to editing. Lots of different styles and ways that you can use transitions. There are classics like cross dissolve. There's kind of a classic fade to black. Sometimes you'll see sort of a, a quick pop of white light. This is kind of a fade to white where you have a frame of white on either side. Sometimes, again, you can sort of linear light dissolve between clips. Sometimes you just leave black space, a, a black frame in between for a more stylized look. So take a quick look here. This one actually, this is all um, straight cuts where the editor uh, and I modified some of these, did a bit of just sort of static black frames in between the cuts. So take a quick look uh, at this and, and yeah, let's just see what we've got here. All right. Okay. 
So let's talk about different things that we can do to sort of make smooth transitions or different types of transitions we might we might want to implement. Very close to my heart. All right, I'm going to mute my dialogue here and I'll turn the music down a little bit. So here we have again like a series of straight cuts. All right. moving between the footage here. And these cuts are really fast. So if we go up to our effects panel and we go to video transitions, here you're going to see all the kind of standard transitions that you would use for editing your video. Now you've got 3D motion. I'm not going to show you these today. You can, you can use these on your own. These are, uh, you know, mm, placed in time. I don't necessarily recommend cube spin. But just showing you that we have lots of different ones. Iris, again, these are kind of a bit old school, a bit 90s, early 2000s, page peels, slides. Some of these can still be useful. Wipes and zooms, actually, you still see these a lot, often to sort of comedic effect in a lot of uh, uh, TV and commercials. The most common ones, though, and sort of the, you know, the least offensive visually ones <laughs> are the classic cross dissolve, dip to black and white, film dissolve, and I'm even going to show you morph cut. So what does a classic cross dissolve look like? So let's go ahead and click on the cross dissolve here. And I'm going to simply drag this between two clips. Okay. Again, I'm going to use my uh, magic mouse here to kind of hover over video one so I can make this bigger inside the timeline. And if I click on the cross dissolve, you can actually see what that looks like. If I go into effects controls, it actually kind of gives you a little bit more um, detail as to what is happening between the clips. Now, before you even do anything, if I hover my mouse over the edges of the cross dissolve, you can see that the icon changes because you can adjust the duration of the cross dissolve. Now, curiously, um, there must have been a dissolve on here before because this is showing you kind of an asymmetrical one. You can see that there's more kind of fading up from the next clip and less on the fading outside. So if I hold down Shift and Command here, I can actually make uh, uh, an asymmetrical in and out on my dissolve here. By default, if you just drag the edges of the dissolve, it will be symmetrical, meaning that it's going to add the same amount of frames to that dissolve on either side. If you want it to be asymmetrical, again, shift and command here on the Mac or shift and, is it shift and control on the PC? And you can expand one side or the other for an asymmetrical dissolve, okay? Usually you use symmetrical ones, but there's plenty of times where you actually want to, you know, fade in or fade out one side a little bit more. So you'll have kind of an asymmetrical look. And if I just kind of play this back now, and in fact, I'm also going to, let me go into this clip here. I'm just going to slip this one a couple of frames back. All right. Like this. Play this back. So that's what a cross dissolve is. Like. All right. And a lot of people who've worked in film and video for a long time, they there used to be a phrase, my friend Kevin used to say this all the time, you know, and you, you see this a lot. Yeah, if you can't resolve it, dissolve it. Meaning that if you had some kind of weird transition and a, and a straight cut wasn't looking good, just add a cross dissolve. <laughs> now, a lot of people really don't like that look. So it, you know, it's kind of up to you, whatever you like stylistically, but you can clearly see what it looks like, okay? So that's a classic cross dissolve. Taking that a step further, let's get out of there. Let's do a dip to white. Now, again, stylistically, sometimes you'll see things where you actually do a bit of a, a bit of a fade. Oh, sorry, I put it on the wrong clip here. Let me go ahead and do this. Like this, all right. So like a bit of a fade to white. All right. Now again, this is entirely up to you if you like that kind of a look. It's kind of nice sometimes when you have that sort of fade out kind of thing. And notice now only the transition, it's, it's actually not going between the clips. You're seeing that last flash of white on the last frame of this clip, okay? And it kind of just gives it a stylized look. Now you might think, okay, yeah, I see that all the time. That's that quick flash of white. Well, actually, 
to achieve that, first of all, you want to do that between really fast cuts like the ones that you see here. One of the techniques that you often see there is, let me go ahead and get rid of this, grab our dip to wipe, and I'm going to drag this on a couple of these clips. And what you can do to make that the most effective so you really get that sort of flash pot look. Now again, these are all asymmetrical for the moment here. Let me go ahead and stick a couple more on here just to kind of show you. All right, let me zoom in. I'm going to hold down my shift and command here. To do that classic flash of white light, you only need a single frame on either side of the transition. So one, a one frame transition on either side is going to give you that kind of flash pot look. So let me go ahead and do the same thing over here. Single frame. Now again, some people really don't like this. This tends to get overused a lot, but sometimes it's just what you need. It just, it just kind of works, okay? So now we've got three of those. Let's wind back, take a look here. You can see, and it really kind of looks like that. Whereas the other one where I was kind of fading and you kind of had that almost like a stopped frame of white, bit more dramatic. This is very much in your face. Okay. And as you saw before, now we also have dip to black. This you will often use for sort of slower moving cuts where things actually kind of fade out a bit more. So a bit more drama with those. So let me just, I'm just turning the sound off, you know, something like this and play this places. Today we are in Tokyo. All right. We are in Tokyo. So just kind of a, a dip to black can be, you know, it's a bit more, it's a bit more dramatic. But what I like here in a very stylistic way of cutting, rather than even using a dip to black, you can see the editor here, they just left empty frames. And that kind of gives you a very, it can give you a very sort of stuttery kind of look. Which is really, really cool. And you can see here, this is like the same shot, the same video clip. They just took out a frame. So you kind of get that very pulsated staccato kind of look just by leaving out a frame. And I'm doing that just by trimming the video. And you can see as I move to the edges here, left or right, the arrow, the, uh, the icon changes. I'm zoomed in. You want to be zoomed all the way in because we're at literally at the frame level here. And you can kind of leave little blank frames of black. I could have done the same thing right here. Leave a frame. Again, here I probably wouldn't have done it because this clip is so short. But just to kind of show you now, if we wind back and play this. Okay. You really get a sense of that. Pa, 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 pa. Things really pop. Things really move across the screen. All right. So those are come some of the standards. Now, if you want a smoother, just to, to point out one more thing. Um, I tend to use a lot of the uh, film dissolve. This one is just, it's just a little bit smoother. Konnichiwa. And it kind of simulates that kind of classic film style look. Uh, where's my, uh, let me just move, I'm gonna mute all my audio here. Let's do a film dissolve on this. Again, these, these cuts are so short, uh, it's gonna be a little hard to see, but you can see that one compared to the, um, the cross dissolve, often known as a linear light dissolve too. It just functions and feels more like a classic film dissolve. I happen to like this one a lot better, so I tend to use this one quite a lot. By the way, this is one of our former text templates, now converted into a motion graphics template. And you can even see this one has that expression applied, and I should mention that too. Anything that you can build in your After Effects template, including having expressions, can be part of that motion graphics template. And here there's an expression that allows this ring and the circle to grow based on the length of our text. So really cool stuff there. And again, this is also contained in my shared library. Now the last, uh, the last transition I'm gonna show you before we move on to overlays is Morph Cut. And this isn't one that I actually talk about a lot because this one, well, sometimes it's one of those features that it can really save the day. Um, it's not, it can't be used for everything, but this is something that you can use if you're, if you're trying to kind of get out of doing a jump cut, all right? Jump cuts, of course, we see all the time in vlogs and on YouTube where you're, you're basically, you know, if you're, he if you're doing like a, uh, an interview and your head is moving and you see these even in my edited versions of these videos on YouTube, 
Um, it's just there's no transition at all, which, by the way, no transition style editing is also very stylistic today. It's very, very common, particularly on YouTube, particularly with vloggers. So but sometimes you want the transitions to actually be a little smoother. And if in the case of an interview like this, um, something like a cross dissolve probably is just going to look a little weird. So here we have a clip. This is a friend of mine, Rod, uh, from this amazing place in Africa, a wild uh, game park called Sabi Sabi. And uh, in this interview, there was a bit that I wanted to cut out. So take a quick listen here. You can see I've actually applied two cuts already. We're going to do a ripple on this. Just take a quick listen and you'll hear what he's saying. You'll hear the bit that I want to cut out. Uh, we blessed. Oh, hold on. Is he muted? He might be muted. Hold on. Or I may have just turned his volume way down. Yeah, it's way down. All right, so just take a quick listen here for a second. With wildlife that um, is habituated to, to Land Rovers and to, uh, to game beings. So you tend to get these really close up one and one encounters with wildlife that pretty much is unique. Uh, things like leopard and lion. They see Land Rovers on a daily basis. Okay, so I want basically the interview to go from Land Rovers and to, uh, to game beings. So Land Rovers and game viewing. A daily basis. They see Land Rovers on a daily basis. I don't need the whole bits about Leopard and Lion and all that. So I'm going to get rid of this piece right here. Again, this is like classic, just, you know, editing up uh, an interview. So I'm going to do a ripple delete on this. So now when I play this back. Um, it's habituated to, to Land Rovers and to, uh, to game viewing. So they see Land Rovers on a daily basis. To, to Land Rovers and to, uh, to game viewing. So they see Land Rovers on a daily Okay. So this is a classic jump cut, all right? So this is kind of the previous frame, the next frame. And you can see his body is in a different place, right? Different place between the edits. Now, you know, again, for a vlog style, um, that doesn't bother me. But for a proper interview, uh, maybe it's a little too abrupt. So what could we do? Well, we could go into transitions. And I told you I love you know, film dissolve. So let's see what a film dissolve looks like on here. All right, wind this back. Listen to, uh, to game being. So I see Land Rovers on a daily basis. All right, so now again, this is a little bit long. We can shorten this. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. We can shorten the dissolve. So I see Land Rovers. But you see, it just, it kind of gives you that weird ghosted look. And I don't want that. Now, I could also do, we talked about like the, 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 the white flash, maybe something like that. All right. So let's see what that looks like. Again, we'll just do one frame. Uh, to game being. So I see Land Rovers on a daily being. So I see Land Rovers. Now, that's okay if it were like one time. All right. But I don't love it. Like, I don't think it looks all that great. So perhaps instead, what we're going to do here is use something called morph cut. And the audio isn't really Im Im important here. We're really focusing on the video, all right? So here we're going to choose morph cut. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to analyze the shots. And if you right click on the morph cut, you can set the transition duration. Now this is currently set to a second and six frames. That's way too long. I'm gonna set this instead to around nine frames because what I want it to do is to basically blend pixel to pixel so that it kind of morphs his position so that we don't really see a jump cut, all right? And it's actually using pixel motion technology, which is something that you have in After Effects, to literally draw pixel to pixel to smooth out that transition. Now, when you use Morph Cut, you're probably, you notice it's analyzing in the background, we're going to give it a moment to do some analysis. Also, to see it in real time here, I'm just going to render the work area. Oh, sorry, I don't need to render the whole work area, just the effects, sorry. My, my bad here, render effects and work area, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so Rod, um, what is- And let's go ahead and play this back now and let you see what it did. So, I see Land Rovers and So, I see Land Rovers So, I see Land Rovers So, I see Land Rovers So, and do you see that as I'm scrubbing through? Look at how it actually redrew the position of his body. Let's mute this. Can you see that? Is that pretty awesome? Now, you'll notice the light. Again, we are live and outside. The lighting changed here. So 
There's a little bit of a light shift that's maybe a little slightly jarring to those paying attention to the color. And we might be able to control that with some basic grading here. But as opposed to this, which looks very abrupt, right? Just look at the position of his body. It's just so sharp to this. Morph Cut is truly, truly awesome. A very handy transition that you can keep in your back pocket. Like I said, it's not gonna work in every instance, but in this particular interview, it just kind of really does the job. And look here, I mean, if you were just watching this and you didn't know, you'd never know that that was a jump cut. All right, super smooth, super cool. And this is a great example of using some amazing Adobe technologies here. So that's called Morph Cut, which you can find in the video transitions panel. All right, so for our last couple of minutes here, we're going to talk about using some overlays, including things like light leaks and some uh, mats. So let me go ahead and go back to my Jace's Places project here. Just for a moment. And then we'll go into one more project and then I'm gonna send you guys on your way, all right? Let's talk about using some overlays and, you know, it, which is another way to actually leverage things like transitions. So I'm going to come over here and let's bring in some. Uh, trying to find a section where I can use a couple of these. Yeah, this will be good here. OK, so we talk a lot. You hear a lot of stuff about, you know, you see or you see a lot of videos where they use another video to kind of transition between something. So if I go into my media browser here. I'm going, I'm going to uh, pop into a different drive where I have some light leaks, which are very handy for transitions. So I'm going to twirl these down. All right. And let's go ahead and grab this one. And if I double click on this, we can take a look at what this looks like in the source monitor. So you see this a lot in movies and films where they use this kind of classic light leak uh, effect to not only transition, but to also stylize and treat a video. Now, if you just want to use it to kind of stylize, you can select a section here. I mean, you could use the whole thing. I'm just going to use a brief piece of it here. And I'm going to drag this down now over top of all these cuts in the video. Now, when I do that, of course, now we're just seeing the light leak. So this is where we're talking about leveraging elements, video elements as overlays. And if you've never looked in the opacity section inside the effects controls, here's where you can do that. Specifically, not only can you adjust opacity, right? So if I just adjust the opacity on this, let's say I bring it down to around 49%. Um, now I have, you know, 49% of that light leak playing over top of the video. But more importantly, you also have the ability to work with blend modes. And this is where it really starts to get interesting because anyone who's worked with blend modes in Photoshop knows that you can do some really amazing things and you can use this on multiple layers of video to get a really cool stylized look. So for something like this, I'll probably choose something like screen, leave my opacity at 100%. And now this kind of just gives you that very, I mean, look, it actually even works color wise just a very stylized kind of look here, but you can use the overlays and blend modes to do some really interesting stylized techniques. Now, if you wanted to use something like a light leak as a transition, kind of similar to the way we used that flash of white, a typical, a typical technique with that is you want to go to sort of the, the brightest section of the light leak, and then you're going to set your in and out to a frame or two before and after, just like this, pretty common when used for transitions. Okay, so that's using blend modes and opacity with light leaks. Now, something else you've seen a lot in videos when people use different kinds of mats. Often these are built in Illustrator or Photoshop, and these can once again be used to kind of stylize and frame out different sections of a video or to use multiple videos to have kind of a two up or three up or five up display. You see this all the time uh, in like travelogue videos. You see it in, in, in title sequences. 
So this is, again, this uh, documentary that I've been working on called 1981 Analog versus Digital, where I used a whole series of different mats. These actually came from um, that studio, and these were created by um, Rampant Design. And basically, what a mat is, is if you take a look, it's an animated graphic. I believe these were all, these were all made in After Effects that you can overlay over top of video. So as you see here, everything that's in white well, basically, I can make that transparent so the underlying video bleeds through and everything in black will be uh, will be completely opaque. All right. And just to kind of show you, I've got a whole bunch of these here. Let me go into some of these mats um, to show you uh, different variations of these. Let me twirl this down. And then I'll show you how to set these up. So these are all 2K mats, again, using hover scrub. And you can see how like a lot of these things, you see this kind of stuff in, in TV intros all the time where they kind of reveal themselves on screen. This kind of effect. And again, these are really easy to build. Look at this one. It goes like side to side. That's very cool. Okay. This one kind of does a whole grid thing on screen. All right. So let's say I wanted to take this one and use it on that video that we just saw, all right? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let me go ahead and double click this just to kind of show you what it looks like in the source monitor. Now this clip isn't very long, but that's okay. Let's set the out point here. Let's go ahead and drag this down like this. I'll extend the video. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a track mat effect. So up in our effects controls, I'm going to choose the track mat key. I'm going to drag the track mat key onto my video layer. When I go into effects controls, now we have the track mat key applied. And what it is looking for is what, where is the mat? Well, what video track? You can see I already had it assigned to track four, the previous one. Now we want it to be on track five. So let's go ahead and say we want that to be on track five. And we're going to use Matt Luma. Again, which is going to knock out all of the white space, leaving the black space. And now very quickly, when I wind this back. Okay. By the way, there, if you're seeing that, that's, there's uh, there's some uh, warp stabilizer on here, so I'm just going to turn that off for the moment so we don't have to see that. Okay. And I can extend this out a little bit more so we can see it more. Okay. And if I wanted to transition back to the other one, again, let's go to video four. Here's the previous one. By the way, you can also see here that I've got a little speed light transition. If we take a look at this in effects controls, you can see I've got it set to 100% opacity using that screen blending mode. And if I play back a couple of these, take a quick look. Very simple. All right, so now I'm back on camera. So, sorry you didn't have my face, although that's okay. Uh, so yes, so we covered track mats, we covered overlays, we covered light leaks, we covered working with transitions, classic cross dissolve, slightly more film-like, film dissolve, linear light dissolve, fade to white, white flash, fade to black, leaving black frames uh, in between cuts, using morph cut to again use pixel motion technology, sorry, uh, uh, pixel motion, pixel motion technology to blend pixels so that you don't have that t -t -t very abrupt jump cut style look, unless you want that. Again, jump cut is very timely, very cool. It's used all over today in film and commercials everywhere. 
that's up to you. It's always a stylistic choice. And then, of course, we started with the essential graphics panel, showing you how to create uh, titles, text, and motion graphics directly from within Premiere Pro CC 2017, or also the ability to create those same motion graphics templates in After Effects with a lot more control, a lot more flexibility in terms of the animation and elements that go into them, and then being able to save those motion graphics templates from both applications into CC libraries. So amazing stuff to really improve, improve your edit, stylize your edit, and just allow you to truly make great video. So thank you again. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we will see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.